Welcome back to the Haven Homestead Podcast, where we learn and grow together on our way to living more sustainable lives. My name is Chris, and welcome to episode 19, Power Outage is what we're going to be talking about today. So when the lights go out, what to do? First thing I want to say before we get into that is that havenhomestead.com is our website. It has all this information and more uh, where this podcast is at, plus all the past episodes, plus our store, plus Lindsay's blog. A lot of uh, things are are uh, linked through our website, so please head on out to havenhomestead.com and check that out. Also, please consider supporting us at patreon.com slash havenhomestead. That's Patreon, spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N, dot com slash havenhomestead. And that's where you can find us and support us to keep us uh, helping, help us help you. So Lindsay was making a little outline on power outages, and she wrote three pages on short-term, long-term, and just general power outages. And so I'm going to use that as a podcast um, information, kind of a scaffold to build upon. And also she's going to be making a, I believe, like an ebook on when the power goes out, just kind of a survival guide. So stay tuned, and I will let you know when that is uh, available. Also, if you were to listen to episode 16 when I interviewed Lindsay, when I interviewed Lindsay, if you want to find out more about her book and where you can be a beta reader and get it for free, she's at www.lindsayhodge.com. Let's jump into the topic at hand, and it is uh, about electricity and and when you have a when we have a power outage. So electricity is a commodity, a commodity that we often take for granted. That is until it goes out, until we don't have it anymore. Even if it's only for a few hours, going without power can be a little more than frustrating. Some people really have a hard time when the power goes out, even for a little while. Power outages happen for a number of reasons, and we're going to discuss why the power would go out and what you can do about it. So three reasons why the power might go out. And I, I thought of you know, generalization, we're kind of putting these into broad umbrellas. And the first one we have here is weather. So recently we had a really heavy snow. The snow was just, it seemed like even on the wires, it would just cling to the other snowflakes. And pretty soon the the wire, there was probably a snow piled on top that was four times the size of the wire. And the uh, power cables close by here were almost drooping to the ground. They were so heavy with snow. And so uh, that could be one of the things. And we had a lot of power outages that day. When we had that really bad snow, there were um, trees coming down onto the power lines and, and branches dropping all over the place. And the roads were blocked in both directions. So weather, uh, whether it be ice storms, snow storms, high winds lightning, um, flood, any of those things could all impact the weather availa- or the uh, power availability. The next reason for maybe power to go out I put down here is man-made problems like car wrecks. Uh, we had a, just recently we had someone run into the power pole down the road and uh, shut off power for a few hours while, while uh, the public utilities department our PUD was out there fixing it. Uh, vandalism. Sometimes people will try to shut down the power on purpose. Um, also, if the power is overtaxed in the summertime when people are running their air conditioners and it's really hot, especially in the southern states, the power usage goes way high. And if uh, that's the case, then we can overtax the system to where it, it blows the breakers or the transformers rather, and it can cause some pretty um, widespread power outages because of just how many people are taxing the uh, power the power grid. And the last reason that I put on the man-made reasons is possibly a terrorist attack or military military action of some sort. So I know in some some places there's only power available for certain times because 
they have a limited power supply, and I don't think that the government buildings have that sort of limitations, but there are some places that you'll have power for, some countries that you'll have power for only a, a little bit during the day. I remember when I was in the Philippines, it seemed like blackouts, well, they call them brownouts there, but brownouts didn't happen very often. Uh, I mean, not like all day, every day, but probably every other week or so, there it would go out for a few minutes and then turn back on. And, uh, you know, I don't know what the, what the reason were, reason was when I was growing up in, in, uh, Southern Idaho, it was one Sunday we were at church and the power went out and it was because a golden eagle had flown onto some power lines and touched, uh, arced across two of them. And when he was landing or flying or, uh, you know, flying, taking off or whatever, and it had lit the bird on fire, killed the bird, lit it on fire, and then it fell down into the the tall grass that that was all dry because it was during the summertime, and started a big fire and and they canceled church and had the all the guys go out and fight fire, uh, try to get it contained so it didn't burn people's fields. And then the last category I put down here, so three categories, weather, man-made problems, and the last one is equipment malfunction. So sometimes a transformer blows because of, you know, something, I'm not, a, I'm not an electrician or a lineman, but maybe overloaded or old or um, whatever, whatever they, uh, whatever happens to make the equipment malfunction, but that seems to happen as well. And as I was researching this subject, I found that because of how old our power grid system is, it's causing an increase in in power outages. In one site I saw it has the power outages are up by 124%. Another one, it was up over 200%. Another source said that in that... Um, and one was newer, the one that said 200%, 200 percent, 200 and something percent, was a few years older than the one that had 124 percent. I think 100, I think that was CNN or had an article on th that was talking about, and uh, that was a 2010, I believe, article. Then the other one I was reading was a tw 2014, and it was saying that the power outages were up, and they're only getting worse because more people are needing power, but our our power grid is not getting any newer. It's been around for a long time and it's still it's still the same style it was a long time ago for 50 years at least. So, our short-term power outage um you know blackouts like I said are are, uh, are going up across the board across the country, especially down south where the where the um power is being used more for air conditioning and then in the hot months and on the east coast when they were, had a big heat wave it seemed like because the population is so dense there that that really is a hard on the on the power system so before there's an outage i'm going to give you some good tips on what to do before an outage happens if you're on oxygen or if you know someone who's on oxygen get that address registered with your power company and they will make your house a priority to get power restored so that you can have uh, you know, oxygen or any other life-saving equipment. They will put you on priority. Most of them have a battery backup, or with the oxygen, they'll have oxygen tanks that you can use until the power comes back on. But the power company needs to know so that they can fix your street before maybe they fix the street next door that doesn't have any, um, the next street over that doesn't have any power, uh, life-sustaining equipment on that, on that street. It's important, I think, to make a blackout kit. And when you have a blackout kit, it's just going to be, you know, a box or a tote or a bag. It doesn't really matter what it's in. But it needs to have a few things. It needs to have some candles. 
so that you can illuminate for an extended period of time. You can also maybe some glow sticks. That's a quick a quick fix. You can just you know, take them out of the package and break um, crack them and get that power or get that light going so that it ends the um, if you, your blackout happens at in the nighttime, then it can be scarier because of how dark everything is. All the neighbor's lights are out, all the street lights are out, your lights are out, and it's total blackness. And most people that live in neighborhoods and cities aren't used to to real dark like that. And it can be unnerving. It can be pretty scary. So when you make your, your blackout kit, make sure that you have uh, light sticks so that you can have instant light flashlights, extra batteries, um, candles, maybe little lanterns. We have some lanterns that are hang- hanging as kind of a decoration in our house, but they also have oil in them and wicks, so they can be used for light. Kind of a functional decoration, if you will. Also put a radio in there, a battery-operated radio, so that when you go to use... Uh, go to something happens and you need and maybe it's going on for a few hours you can go turn on your battery operated radio if it has a wind up you can wind it up and charge the battery for a few minutes and then listen to the radio and find out what's going on and maybe it was something bigger than just a local event and so that way you can plan accordingly if it's a battery operated radio then have extra batteries for your flashlight have extra batteries for that too it's important that you know how to open your garage door manually. Uh, this is something I wouldn't have thought up, thought of because I haven't lived in a house that had a garage door since I was a little kid. But if you have um, an a mecha- uh, electric garage door and an automatic one with the with the door opener, then you need to know how to open that manually so you can still get the car out if you need to leave the neighborhood, and so your car isn't blocked into the into the garage. If it's possible, you should think about getting a generator. The generator, you can put it in the backyard and fire it up, run a power cord, an extension cord inside, plug in your refrigerator, your freezer, if they're separate, if they're the same, then it's not a problem. Um, anything that that needs to run, uh, then you can go ahead and plug that in so that your your generator can power uh you know cuz your fridge if you if the power goes out and you keep opening and closing the fridge all that cold air is coming out you can spoil your food and then once this food's spoiled then when the power comes back on you just have to throw it out and that can be a rather big expense same with the freezers we have a chest freezer the nice thing about that is as long as it stays shut it'll keep everything frozen for over you know a day plus so that is um, something that something that we uh, like about that, and and I would suggest thinking in that same. If you have room for a chest freezer, think in that same track that maybe you should get a chest freezer, a small one. They're not very expensive, especially if you look for Memorial Day sales or or uh, Black Friday deals or something like that, and or used ones and get a small chest freezer and then you can use that and if the power goes out you'll have things stay cold for cold longer and those one that's one of the things you'd plug into your generator uh, i wouldn't really be worrying about a tv unless you have little kids that need to be occupied but those are just some things to kind of think about also um, an alternate heat source you don't want to use a propane stove inside because the propane burning will suck out suck up the oxygen eat up the oxygen in the in the house and it could cause a suffocation hazard so you don't want to use that as a heat source but you need to be thinking about if there's another way to stay warm if this power outage happens in the winter time you're going to need to stay warm somehow so that your inconvenience of a power outage doesn't become an emergency with hypothermia or medical emergencies. Okay, so now that we're prepared and there's a power outage, what are you going to do? Number one is keep calm. 
Relax. It'll be okay. People have lived without power for thousands of years, and it's going to be just fine. Your your body's not going to stop working uh, just because the lights went out, and your your cell phone might not be able to be charged, but you know you'll survive that too. Some things you can do uh, while the power's out, if you know it's the daytime and you and you just need to. It's important to keep occupied. You need something to keep you keep you busy, so you're not thinking about the power going out. It can fill people with it can fill people with a lot of anxiety. So some of the things you can do are, is clean the house. You might not be able to vacuum, but you could always uh, dust or clean out some clutter in places that you um, may have felt too busy to do. If you have chores or animals that need to be taken care of, or go walk the dog if the if the uh, weather permits. You can always read a book. You have that candle there or a glow a glow stick. You can use that to to have enough light to read a to have enough light to read a book. And um, one see our power when we had like I said to, somebody ran into a power pole. It was only a few days ago, and I came home and Lindsay had all the stuff unplugged. Your sensitive electronics like computers and TVs, you'll want to unplug so that when the power turns back on, that surge of power doesn't damage any of them. Um, this is just important. Just that's just my two cents on that, and um, take it or leave it for whatever it's worth. But unplug your sensitive electronics because that's a big expense if they get damaged because of the power coming back on. Now, what shouldn't you do? So now the power came on, or the power just went off. We're nice and calm. We're going to go read a book, or we're going to do some chores, or we're going to do something, and we're going to unplug all of our all of our electronics, because then we'll plug them back in after the power turns back on. You can have one light switch on, just so you know that when that light switch turns on, the power's back on. You can go around and plug everything back in. What not to do? Don't freak out. Don't go into a panic attack because. You're not helping anyone out. You're doing everyone a disservice, especially yourself. Don't keep opening the fridge or the freezer, like I said earlier. It is uh, you can get your get too warm in there, and if the power outage lasts for any length of time, you'll your food will spoil. Don't keep flushing the toilet uh, if you if you uh, need to go pee. If it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. Don't worry about. Uh, flushing the toilet after every little thing because your water pressure chances are that uh, so we're like on a well and we have a little bit of pressure in the pressure tank but after only a few flushes that pressure is gone and it's not coming back up until the power turns back on so don't keep flushing the toilet or you're going to be out and you're going to wish you had it and make sure the kids know that too so that they don't, kids don't think about that sort of thing. They just go by habit and flush the toilet. Now we all do, but as parents, as adults, the power went out and we're doing the number one thing, and that's keep relaxed and keep calm. And so we're, keep, we're thinking with a cool head. Don't use a gas oven, a gas range, a barbecue, a portable propane heater, or any of that sort of stuff for indoor heating, because the oxygen... Uh, they'll eat up all the oxygen and then create carbon monoxide um, and that can kill you. If you can use a flashlight rather than a candle, that's optimal. But if you have a if you don't have the flashlights or or uh, batteries are dead or something like that, then candles are good a good option. It's just a candles are a fire hazard, so that's something to just think about. I, I caution you. Not necessarily don't do it, but just use caution. And if the uh, power lines are down near you, stay away from those two. You don't want to be anywhere near uh, power lines because they might all of a sudden kick back on and uh, and could hurt you. Well, if you have any other tips that you'd like to share, please go to havenhomestead.com and to the podcast section and look under this episode number 19 and leave a comment on what you do when the power goes out.
Well, once again, thank you for listening to the Haven Homestead podcast where we learn and grow together on our way to living more sustainable lives. Thanks for listening. <laughs>